Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I hear somebody say yeah? Yeah. Sounds like a Brown University football game here today. It's okay to praise our God. It sure is. I mean, if we can get excited at football games, if we can get excited doing all those kind of events, can't we get excited in church and praise our God for the future God has for us to change the world? I, be I believe that about us. The world needs to change. And we're excited about that possibility as we've been sharing the last three weeks and closing out today. We're talking about what it means to create our generous future. We'll be going back to that in January. Some churches during COVID-19 actually closed. Our church, thanks to our board of directors envisioning a live stream ministry before COVID, we did not miss one Sunday. And we are continuing to find new ways to be and grow into the future. We are reimagining what it means to reimagine church. And that may be saying, yeah. yeah. It may be saying, woohoo. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> I do believe that God has great things for us in a world where there is so much negative negativity and so much negative messaging. There needs to be a place that confronts the realities of the world but does it in a way that's encouraging and positive and hopeful. And we're going to be talking about hope uh, for the next four Sundays through the Christmas season because our world is hungry, desperate in fact, for hope. We've been talking about what it means to grow in number as well as in spirit. And we've talked about AIM. A-I-M-M. -M. A is for attract. I is for include. Mature is for, M is for mature. And the next M is for mobilize. In terms of attraction, we've talked about having a table where there is room for everybody. We've talked about what it means to be a place where there is no VIP list. Everybody is on the list and everybody is a VIP. We've talked about what it means to mature and that's a big challenge in this world so that we have something real and deep and wide to offer our community. And today we're talking about mobilizing. Now when you think of mobilizing you may think in terms of strategy and plans and engagement lists and things like that and that's part of it. And yet that mobilization needs to come from a deeper place that, that drives all of that. And that deeper place is a place where we tap into our gifts. And so in thinking about MCCDC, I thought, what gift, especially during this coming season, do we have to offer our community? And I came across a quote. Your eyes are the eyes with which Christ looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the eyes with which Christ looks with compassion on this world. Now that quote is by a great mystic, Teresa of Avila. But in looking at her life, I think if she were here today, she'd be right out there at the protest marches. She'd be standing up for compassion. She'd be standing up for human rights. And we are called to be a congregation of a compassion. That is our gift to the world. What does it mean for MCCDC to be a church that looks at the world with those compassionate eyes? What does it mean for MCCDC to be a church of generous compassion? Part of what it means is rather than turning our heads and rushing by the ones in need, we're called to see the need and respond. And I'm grateful that we're called to share this gift of compassion. Attract, include, mature, and mobilize compassion. How do we do it? How do we make it real? Well, this past Monday night, the Transgender Day of Remembrance service here at MCCDC. It's the first time since 2019 that we were able to actually invite everybody in and not just do the service online with the participants here. And I can tell you my heart moved in so many amazing ways when I saw people come to MCCDC for the first time because of this service. The looks on some of the faces. Looking in and seeing flags, rainbow flags and the transgender flag and flags of hope and power and saying, my flag is up there. <laughs> There's a church like this? Really? <laughs> and then seeing that this was a place where the transgender community is not only welcomed but absolutely celebrated. Full identities celebrated. 
We live in a world where they're trying to erase the transgender community. There are politicians and leaders in our country who say that being transgender is a mental illness. We resist that, we oppose that, we reject that, we refute that. You are welcome here, and not only are you welcome here, you are celebrated here. That is who we are, a place to mobilize and celebrate the full identity of God's people. One of the persons who was speaking on Monday night talked about the importance of mentoring the next generation. And so this compassion that we're mobilizing is about future generations. The work we do today is mobilizing the work of trans youth who will grow up to be, actually they're leaders now. <laughs> I was going to say future leaders, but the reality is that we lead together. The work that we are doing today is about future generations. This mobilization began before we arrived and it will continue after we leave. It's a mobilization of generation upon generation. Back on April uh, back in April of 1971, MCCDC had their very first service on Capitol Hill in an apartment. Twelve people were at our very first service. Now, in April 1971, they had no idea that they were creating somebody else's future at that moment and the impact it would have. They had no way of knowing that there was an awkward, frightened, 11-year-old young person in Central Valley of California trying to figure life out, trying to deal with bullying, who would someday become the pastor of MCCDC. I didn't know them. They didn't know me. And we're here. I believe with all my heart that today we are preparing a place for someone who today is being bullied and is afraid and awkward and trying to figure life out and that someday they will be one of the leaders of MCCDC. The compassion we're building today is not just about us. It's about the future generations that God will raise up. We are mobilizing compassion for the needs of future generations. We're also mobilizing compassion for the needs of the hungry. One of the things that we do as a congregation is offer grocery store cards for those living with food insecurity. And many of you, even in the last week, have made some great uh, support for that and we're thankful for that. Recently a young parent came and knocked on our door. They had four children. Five of them were hungry and we were able to say yes. We were able to say yeah. <laughs> we were able to help. A few weeks ago another came to MCCDC who had just arrived in this country. They couldn't speak English but they had someone with them to translate. They were looking for immediate housing and we don't provide that ministry but I was able to refer them to some help for housing through another agency. We work with a number of community partners. And I was able to say, while this is being worked out for you, here are some food cards to help your family while you're here. Welcome to the United States. And welcome to MCCDC, a church of compassion. We're compassionate towards the needs of our community, the social needs, the financial needs, and also the spiritual needs. This is another place of incredible compassion. We are called to realize that we are here to serve people wherever they are on the spiritual landscape. And yes, some people today are ready to say, yeah. And others today, perhaps even in this space, were saying, I, I'm not there today. And I would say that's okay. We recognize that the holidays are difficult for those suffering from grief, loss, regret, or loneliness. Some call it the Christmas blues. For others, it goes deeper than that. There are many in this congregation who have lost loved ones during the holidays. We have one member who lost both their grandparents during the holidays. We know that many of us carry a lot of mixed feelings during this time. And so at MCCDC, we want to offer support. We have to look close. We have to look deep. We have to look beyond the strain of the forced smile or the superficial laughter and be there and to listen. Seeing such needs, MCCDC is offering some special times together via Zoom on December 5th and December 12th at 7 p.m. We have some gifted facilitators, Reverend Kathy Alexander and Reverend Dr. Robin and Dr. Carla, who will be there to listen and to offer resources and support to navigate this season, to navigate this season with compassion and with hope. 
We are called to build a generous future that sees the need and responds and offers support. We know we can't fix people. That's not our call. God does that. Our call is simply to offer that gift of presence and that listening and that open heart. I pray that in the future MCCDC will be known as yes the church that grew during the time of COVID but they would also be known as the church of holy com compassion. I pray that MCCDC would be known in the future as a church that meets physical, social, and spiritual needs. That we would be that amazing, generous community. That our gift would be mobilizing physical and spiritual and social compassion. I pray that God would help us to be that church of wisdom and revelation. I pray that we would be a place where strangers become friends. Monday through Saturday, we have a prayer call at noon, and oftentimes short stories are shared as part of that. And so we met at noon this past Thursday. One of the stories shared was a story of Wanda Dench, who in 2016 was inviting her grandson to Thanksgiving dinner. She didn't know that her grandson had changed his number. And so the person who received the text, Jamal, didn't have a place to go Thanksgiving, and so, you know, responded and said, well, I'm not your grandson, but I'm Jamal, and I'm new to the community. Uh, could I still come? And Wando was like, absolutely. And so Jamal came, and a wonderful friendship was developed. And so Jamal came back the next year, and the next year, and became a part of that family. An incredible gift of friendship, a stranger becoming a friend becoming family. What they didn't know is that Wanda's husband would pass and not be there at one of these Thanksgivings. But Jamal was there and because of that it was more than just family and friends. Jamal became a great source of encouragement to Wanda and is a source of encouragement today. That story makes me think of who we're called to be. A place for that open invitation. A place where strangers become friends. Some might say, oh, that was just a coincidence. One of my mentors, Reverend Vicki Gibbs, would say, no, that's not a coincidence. That's a God incident. And then she would say something I've always remembered. That's not odd. That's God. <laughs> I believe that we are called to be a church with that open table. A church that says, yeah. A church that says yes. A church that says not only are you welcome here, you are absolutely celebrated here. Amen and so on.